morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the first panel discussion uh, in today's conference. Uh, and uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, on behalf of the Financial Times, where I'm the Eastern Europe editor, uh, to uh, have been in invited by Dragon Capital to uh, moderate this uh, panel this morning. Uh, now, our theme uh, is that uh, is Ukraine's economic and political outlook uh, we might have uh, said uh, that the theme is Ukraine at a crossroads. Uh, we wouldn't want to say that because it's too much of a cliche, but it is extremely true nonetheless. As you've heard, uh, Ukraine is at a crossroads facing a geopolitical choice between closer uh, integration with the European Union on one side or closer integration with Russia on the other. It also faces a crossroads of sorts uh, in terms of its fiscal situation, in terms of its credit worthiness. Uh, it's facing exter record external funding needs this year. And the choice it has there in some ways echoes the, or mirrors the geopolitical choice. One possibility is uh, a new agreement with the International Monetary Fund, as we've heard. Um, another would be uh, to uh, finally reach an agreement with Russia on reducing the gas price. Uh, but, of course, that would have uh, important uh, political and arguably geopolitical strings attached to it. There is a third choice, perhaps, which is the, uh, the muddle through option, um, as Dragon Capital calls it. Um, but as we may find out this morning, that option of merely muddling through uh, is uh, increasingly uh, an untenable one, uh, or certainly a, a suboptimal one. We have a very, um, a very good panel to uh, discuss these themes this morning. Uh, you've already uh, met uh, uh, President Kwasniewski. Let me briefly introduce uh, the other uh, members of the panel. Immediately to my left, uh, Petro Poroshenko will be well known to you as both a businessman and politician. He's sometimes known as the Chocolate King for creating the Russian Group, Ukraine's largest confectionery manufacturer. Uh, and he's been, in recent years, Foreign Minister and Minister for Economic Development and Trade and remains a legislator today. Uh, the, uh, on the other side of uh, President Krasniewski, we have Max Allier, who has been for 13 years uh, with the International Monetary Fund, advising a number of countries, and since 2009 has been the resident representative in Ukraine, uh, heavily involved in promoting the economic reform program attached to the previous IMF agreement, and of course will be very involved in any future agreement. Uh, at the far end, we have uh, Pavel Granievsky, uh, who for 20 years uh, has been an investment banker, with uh, Daiwa, with Morgan Stanley, and most recently, City Handlowy. Uh, he was the general counsel for Poland's mass privatization program in uh, the mid-1990s. Uh, and these days, having been on the board of the Warsaw Stock Exchange, uh, which is becoming really the leading stock market of the region, he is now a member of the management board. I believe recently became the uh, deputy, the vice president. Is that right? Yes, the vice president. OK. One final thing before we get into the discussion. Uh, you will find on your chairs, as well as um, uh, the interpretation device, something that looks a bit like a TV remote control. Uh, it isn't that, and don't lose that, um, because keep it close to you, because we will be uh, trying to involve you in the discussion this morning, uh, posing some questions uh, a little bit later on, on which you will be uh, voting uh, to find out what the audience thinks about uh, some of the issues that we're uh, talking about this morning. Um, but let me first of all um, start by continuing the theme of the, the EU association agreement. I want to move on to the other things as well, but um, President Kwasniewski, um, it's clearly more that you uh, wanted to say about that. Uh, one thing that I'm not entirely clear on is exactly what Ukraine is expected to do between now and May. May has been set, as you said, as a deadline for showing progress um, on various issues, uh, uh, for demonstrating seriousness in terms of um, its European uh, choice. 
What will you and your European Union, European Parliament colleagues be looking for, and what should we as observers be looking for between now and May? I, I don't have the list of these um, um, uh, decisions which, which are expecting um, uh, before May, maybe, um, uh, but in my, for, for example, domain, domain, domain uh, we are working together with uh, uh, Cox, it's, it's very easy to say that is some progress with the situation of uh, two people in, in, in uh, Ukraine. The first is uh, for, uh, for former Minister of Interior, Mr. Lutsenko, and I think uh, legally it's, it's absolutely possible to do it. And uh, we expect that one day it will happen. Um, and then, of course, it's um, necessary to find some uh, solutions, even to wait for, for uh, legal solutions uh, from Strasbourg, but especially to cre create some, some um, uh, necessary humanitarian standards in case of, of, of uh, Madame Timoshenko. And frankly speaking, uh, in these two cases, we will not wait until May. We have uh, some more limited time because next two months it means, uh, and well, it's mid of, of uh, April, we will uh, report the situation in the European Parliament. And I repeat again that the European Parliament, maybe today is not so important to sign association agreement, but for ratification, this is absolutely the place. And if we will miss this, uh, the two things that uh, we have problems, and in my opinion, for Barroso and Rampoy, uh, this uh, understanding from the European Parliament is very important, not only because of his personal uh, situation, but uh, or their personal situation, but uh, that is important because uh, if we will sign this FTA and the association agreement, we should have, we Europeans, we should have 99% of um, um, uh, chances to ratify all these documents. Because if not, it would be absolutely wrong from our side. Does progress uh, on these issues, though, mean um, uh, the release of Mr. Lutsenko? I mean, just release. to be clear, means release. No, no, it, no, in this case, it means absolutely release. Okay. Because he's after 50% of his sentence, and uh, his um, uh, health is, is, is bad. He's after surgery. He needs the next surgery. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, it's... Uh, even each day which Lutsenko is, is in, 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 the, in the prison is bad for, for Ukrainian image. It's bad for, for the image of, of the authority here. And what about with Mrs. Timoshenko? Are we also talking about a release of Mrs. Timoshenko? Well, uh, but that is much more complicated because um, if Strasbourg will decide, because now legally, in this uh, legal uh, framework, we have uh, Strasbourg because all these procedures concerning this sentence of, uh, in the so-called um, uh, gas case. I don't speak now about new cases, what I said, you, you listen. Because in my opinion, to open new cases against Timoshenko now is politically disaster. It's politically disaster. It means that we complicate by own ideas the situation. Why? What for? Um, that Strasbourg is the point number one. And number two, absolutely possible, is a, some kind of, of pardon from the side or amnesty from the side of, uh, of, of the president or the parliament. But in this case, we have um, this uh, complication number three, what I described, this psychological complication. And uh, if you want to change this Dragon Capital meeting for a much more psychological meeting, I can explain you more, but I think you have not enough time to to participate in such session, you know, very, maybe interesting, but, uh, but f f on different topic. If the European court uh, ruling goes in favor of Ms. Timoshenko, would you like to see the Ukrainian authorities then drop the other cases against her and then take the opportunity to uh, if I would release be, her? If I would be a politician, of course, uh, I will say uh, it's necessary to stop all these um, uh, accusations. Uh, of course, um, uh, I understand because the such typical answer of the representatives of authority everywhere, not only in Ukraine, is that first, ju judiciary is independent. <coughs> we have some evidence. It's necessary to do something. Okay. But we speak about all cases very, very old. We don't speak about something new. The case, uh, the, the newest one case against Timoshenko is gas case because it happened uh, in 2009. Sterbain is 96, others are 97, something like that. 
In many countries, that is even too late to start such cases. Here, this is different approach. But um, uh, I tell you, me as a politician, my wish or my, my suggestion to, to the people here would be, okay, I understand some um, uh, you know, reaction of, of, of voters, of people, everybody, but if our strategic goal today is association agreement, please stop it, please don't complicate our situation more, because it's enough complicated. And for, for Ukraine, it would be much easier to discuss even with uh, European um, uh, community the question of uh, judiciary, that it's not so easy to reform this system, because it's not easy. It's a fact, you know, you can, you can have a new law, you can have a new structure even of prosecution, of prosecutor's office, but how to find the people with the new type of thinking? Because, you know, in, in the prosecution here, the most important is the interest of the state. This is very old Soviet style type of thinking of all prosecutors. And for us, for Europeans, in, even for the prosecutor, the most important is a human being, is an individual. And then how to change this mentality? Of course, that is, and even if, if, if we'll discuss these reforms, and some of elements of the reforms happen, but we understand that, that we need time. And this change of the mentality of prosecutors, we cannot discuss in May or, or November, or that, that we take much more time, but the process should start. And we cannot, um, and sometimes, because the structure of prosecution here is extremely strong, and the role is unbelievable. And we have a lot of uh, self-defense from this side. And sometimes even good ideas of reforms are changed into some kind of cosmetic reforms. And Europe cannot accept cosmetic reforms because we speak about substantial reforms. In your um, discussions with the U Ukrainian authorities, and uh, in, in a moment I'd like to bring in Mr. Poroshenko on this as, as well, but uh, do you get the sense that the Ukrainian authorities have understood that after 20 years of, in essence, playing one side off against the other, of, of tacking towards the EU uh, for a while, then tacking back towards Russia for a while, that have they understood that now they do have to make a decision? It's one way or the other. Well, sometimes we, we have such impression that uh, they understand, and sometimes we have impression that don't understand. And that depends off of the day. I don't know, you know, Monday, Wednesday, they understand, and <laughs> Tuesday is not. Uh, but seriously speaking, um, I think that that is really time. And of course, um, I can even personally, and with Petro, we can, we can uh, be personally angry that um, uh, we missed a good time. As I tell you, after Orange Revolution, the time was excellent. <coughs> Europe was before the crisis. And, um, after being bank of enlargement was time of such um, enthusiasm of, of new countries. And uh, I, I visited many, many places together with, Mr. with President uh, Yushchenko. And I tell you, everywhere, from Washington to Brussels, Paris, Berlin, everywhere, the doors for Ukraine were absolutely open. And in my opinion, the situation of Yushchenko 2005, 2000, even 2006, was much more comfortable, better, as situation of such a hero as Mr. Wałęsa, my predecessor, in Poland in 1990. Yeah. Because um, this time, 1990, with, with Soviet Union before collapse, in the world it was a lot of uh, question marks. 2005, it was a lot of enthusiasm. But of course, that's the history. And today, I think, after seven um, or almost eight years of this, of this period, it's necessary to say, yes, we have a historical chance and we have historical choice. Let me ask um, uh, Mr. Poroshenko about that as well. And I mean, it's your impression that the Ukrainian um, political uh, leadership now understands the importance of this choice and that it now has to make a choice, or is there still a, t uh, a temptation to try and continue um, plowing this, m this middle furrow, following this middle path between the two sides? First of all, I want to thank uh, Dragon Capital and uh, for such a big numbers of investors, uh, which make me very optimistic about the future of the Ukrainian economy and the perspective of Ukrainian uh, European integration and signing up the uh, association agreement. I uh, understand the joke of President Kwasniewski about the uh, schedule of the understanding of Ukrainian authority of the importance of European integration. 
and in that case we should choose either Wednesday or Friday when we we'll, uh, should make a negotiation with the, U with the Ukrainian leaders. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a very optimistic person in case of the Ukrainian-European integration. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, uh, Ukrainian authorities have fully understand uh, what necessary to do and how important it is. And uh, I think that the last summit, which has, uh, ends the day before yesterday, is just absolutely clarify the picture, what necessary to do. There is no any different opinion. We have three points we should demonstrate the progress. Point number one is a selective justice. And uh, President Kwasniewski is absolutely detailed importance and information about what necessary to do in, in which term. We should finish all the work before beginning of May. And if we take into account that we have March and April, this is two months of very hard work. No discussion what to do, no discussion how to do. We have absolutely detailed plan. Uh, and this is now, the poll is now on the Ukrainian side. Position number two is economic reform, and all reform in the agenda of the association agreement. Ukrainian authorities signed these documents, verified it, and we absolutely know what to do. And the third position is the election code. Ukraine should be a democratic country, and European values should have a top priority. And uh, this is simply very dangerous for Ukraine to be in the middle between the two chairs because it's quite difficult to, to keep the stability. And uh, if from the European side we have absolute, also absolutely clear obligation, we have signed the day before yesterday uh, agreement for macrofinancial support. Can you imagine that in the situation which European countries has now with the deficit of the budget, with the difficulties in every single European country, European community confirm the 610 million euro just, can you imagine, for the compensation of the deficit of the trade between Ukraine and European Union. Do you find any other country who act like that in relation with Ukraine? Me no. And uh, the question number two is the cooperation in the uh, energy sector. We receive absolutely firm position about the participation of European companies in the modernization of our gas transportation system. Take into account <coughs> the agreement with the Shell uh, about Shell gas and the potential agreement with the Chevron. It's created a huge basis for the Ukrainian energy independence, and uh, mostly it depends uh, on the European countries. And the third position is the privileges we have in absolutely asymmetric, deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union, which bring us uh, a lots of investments, a lots of technology, lots of uh, budget revenue and uh, improving our balance of payment situation. And we have only one condition, just uh, fulfill your promises and renew the cooperation with the IMF. Discussion about the promises is finished. We don't have any necessity or any possibility to return on this topic. And. Uh, this is the same like with the memorandum of, uh, with the IMF. When we, uh, all the time when mission come, we start to discuss the tariffs question or uh, hopes, some hopes about the changing of the gas prices. And this is going on and on and on. And now, gentlemen, either you have IMF cooperation or not. Does it mean that if you don't have the cooperation with IMF, it would be any default or anything like that? No, not at all. But that would be absolutely different price of the money, absolutely different maturity of the loans we can have, and Ukrainian budget simply don't have the money to pay such a high rate and to pay such a short maturity. That's the case. 
And from my point of view, we need neither pro-European or pro-custom union policy. We, need, should be, we, we absolutely need just a responsible policy of the Ukrainian politician. And from my point of view, we demonstrate already a responsible policy, because I am now in the European <coughs> Integration Committee uh, of the Parliament. And it was my proposal when we find out the compromise on the declaration for the, uh, for the European Union, which, which was vote in the Parliament. We demonstrate that we can find out the, this type of compromise, understanding the importance of the situation. It was opposition proposal who uh, de-blocked the parliament because of the summit. And that is another good sign that we have a possibility, not as a traditional fighting in the Ukrainian parliament, but we can find out now the way how to find out a compromise. And the third positive sign is the whole participant of the process, no matter it is in the government or in the opposition. We agreed that the whole, the, the whole list of laws which uh, uh, prepare for the, European, for the agenda of the uh, association agreement would be absolutely supported by the opposition. Could you imagine that just uh, five laws which was absolutely necessary for the finishing the first stage visa-free regime was prepared just four days ago? I don't understand what they are waiting for. The ratification of the agreement for the facilitation of the visa was sent to the parliament just one week ago, keeping somewhere in the cabinet of ministers and administration of the president for half a year. This is not a responsible policy for the European integration. I'm absolutely sure about that. And this is simply impossible if you work like that to finish all the job in a, uh, in a two months time. That's why Ukraine, both government and opposition, should demonstrate absolutely decisive step in the case of Mr. Lutsenko, as President Kwasniewski said. We are very close to the, to the solving of this question. I know what I'm talking about, and Mr. President can confirm that. We should have, uh, we should deliver the compromise result about the Timoshenko. We should make absolutely uh, firm terms about the procurator generation, ge ge not generation, general procurator uh, office reform, because uh, this is absolutely impossible, neither for investment climate nor the, for the right of the people. And what is very important, the investment climate. We should do a lot of things. In uh, four minutes, Ukrainian cabinet of minister uh, will uh, start to uh, adopt the program of the government in the, on the government uh, meeting session with the participation of members of parliament from opposition and with the participation of the president. Am I very optimistic about this program? Unfortunately, no. Because this is old-style Soviet, Soviet program. This is absolutely nothing to do with the market economy. We again have a priority in the certain industry. We have a support for certain enterprises which killing the competitiveness. We have right opposite uh, position we need now in Ukrainian economy. We should defend the competitiveness. We should create the uh, pressure on the enterprises and on the, on the business. We should remove all uh, and uh, continue the process or maybe start the process, the real process of deregulation. And uh, we should understand that instead of the increasing the pressure on the Ukrainian economy, we should cut the expenditure of the Ukrainian government. That would be the only way how we can demonstrate the progress.